remembered in this country forever for awful reasons. To the people of Newtown, we are with you today and in the days, weeks, and months ahead. That was the word today from Ron Barber, who was shot and wounded in the mass shooting in Tucson last year that killed six people and wounded 13, including the grievous wounding of Congresswoman Gabby Giffords. Ron Barber, who took Gabby Giffords' seat in Congress after she stepped down to deal with her injuries, he said today, as those of us in Tucson know, senseless acts such as these tear at the very fabric of a community. Mark Kelly, Gabby Giffords' husband, said today, I just spoke with Gabby and she sends her prayers from Tucson. That's going to help. In Oak Creek, Wisconsin, where four months ago there was another mass shooting at a Sikh temple, another six people gunned down at that temple. A school superintendent there today told the local press that she cried when she heard the news out of Newtown, Connecticut. She said, we always think it can't happen here, and we pray fervently that it won't. But as we know from Those our experience this are going summer, to help as well. it can happen anywhere. The mayor of Aurora, Colorado, is still helping his community try to recover from the mass shooting there this summer, where 12 people were shot and killed and another 58 people were shot but survived. He said today from Aurora, our hearts go out to the people of Newtown. Colorado Senator Michael Bennett, he said today, as Coloradans, we know how this type of tragedy can shake a community to its core. We are here shake. for Connecticut today. Colorado's governor, John Hickenlooper, he said, we know too well what impact this kind of violence has on a community. He said that the first thing he wanted to do today was talk to his counterpart governor in Connecticut, Dan Malloy. Governor Hickenlooper said, I cannot put into words how impossible it seems to me that this can happen again so suddenly. Virginia Tech was the site of a mass shooting five years ago where 32 people were shot and killed on a college campus. Another 17 people were shot and survived. The president of Virginia Tech said today, we of the greater Virginia Tech community know from our experience of the unending sorrow and horror that has now descended on the Newtown, Connecticut community. A man who was governor at the time of the Virginia Tech shooting, Tim Kaine, he said today, our Commonwealth knows too well the pain of senseless gun violence. Colin Goddard, uh, who survived the Virginia Tech massacre, he still has three bullets in him that were fired that day. He said today on MSNBC, I'm still trying to wrap my head around the mass shooting that happened in Oregon earlier this week. When I saw this morning that this had happened, I sunk in my chair. You really cannot do justice to what these kids and what these teachers have just experienced. In the classroom where Colin Goddard was shot at Virginia Tech, there were 17 people in that classroom. Only seven of them survived. Two dozen kids were shot and wounded in a high school cafeteria in Springfield, Oregon in 1998. 1998, the police chief there now, who was a first responder that horrible day at that Oregon high school 14 years ago, said today about Newtown, I know that there's going to be a lot of emotion in that community. He said in addition to the victims and their families in Newtown, that his heart goes out to the police and the emergency services personnel that responded to deal with this because this is going to take a toll on a lot of people. Beth Nimmo, whose daughter was killed in the Columbine High School mass shooting, she said today, as far as the parents go, they're not going to know what hit them for a long, long time. My heart is racing, and I just feel like these parents, they're gonna hurt so bad for so long, and there's not much you can do to console someone like this. Frank DeAngelis was principal of Columbine High School when the massacre happened there. He still is the principal there today. He said when he heard what happened in Connecticut today, quote, it just made me sick to my stomach. It just takes me back to what we felt on April 20th, 1999. Even though it's going to be 14 years, it just takes us back to that horrific day. And Dave Cullen, who wrote the definitive book on the Columbine mass shooting, he said today, in my head, I have always insisted that any death is just as tragic but little kids, this is overwhelming me. We're going to be covering the latest news out of Newtown, Connecticut this hour. And there is new news. Law enforcement officers say the weapons used in today's shootings were legally purchased and registered to the gunman's mother, who may have been one of his victims. In addition to the 26 people killed at the elementary school, another victim, believed to be the shooter's mother, was found at a home nearby. 
Also, we're told that the gunman's brother, who was briefly misidentified by authorities as the shooter himself, he was questioned by police today after being picked up in New Jersey. The brother is not believed to have had any involvement in the shootings. We're going to be getting to all of that latest information, including some reports tonight from live at the scene. We're also going to be talking about the policy debate that has to arise in the aftermath of this nearly what unspeakable policy event, despite debate. all the calls for that debate to not happen. Never going to happen. We're going to be talking about all of that this hour. Never going to happen. The immediate question here is how we connect the specific horror of this particular tragedy today to the cumulative experience we have as a country with mass shootings. As a country that is subject the to this NRA kind of is going to make sure you don't connect and more frequently than any of us could possibly imagine but all These individual crazy people mass killings were not in fact happening to us as a country you month can't month, count for crazy year. people this is the way we live as Americans can we bring anything to the aftermath and the response to Newtown from our national experience no living through this time and time and time and time again Joining us now is David. But all individual years. crazy people. Journalist researching and reporting There's on the nothing you can do about it. He wrote the book Columbine. Uh, Dave, thank you for joining us. This guy is a complete fuck up. Fuck up. Is there, is this the right question to ask? Is there anything about the greater context of these tragedies that we have endured that can inform the way we process what happened today? Oh, I think that's exactly the right question. And. Is it? What's the I answer? I sort of took my breath away going through that litany. I kind of wasn't prepared because I, well, we all lived through all those and a lot of those names, I know. Um, but I think it, it brings home the point even more that uh, yeah. there are things to be learned here that we haven't really uh, stepped up to learn. And I think the, the, the biggest single thing yeah, is, is a, um, we do need to look at the big picture. because oh, the big picture. Yeah, yeah, happen, the big picture. Every, yeah. People feel like they want to know why. Like, why did this happen? But the, the sort of the small why is why did this happen? And they're looking at the bigger why, which you were talking about, is why does this keep happening? Blah, 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 blah we, fucking we, blah. It's a mental thing where we equate those. And we assume mm -hmm. those are the same thing, and they're not. Um, well, they're not, are they? Yeah, there, yeah. there were two really well, incredible not. studies done about this. One by the FBI, oh, one studies, by the yeah, Secret yeah. Service, and the Department of, um, of uh, Education. Fan fantastic studies. May have people talking and rating shit. There is no single profile of the shooter. There is no, if we're looking for the type or the rationale or the motive, whatever. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's thing. lots of different types, you know what I mean? It doesn't exist. It's got to be at least, but what, three or four different kings of murderers? Believe it or not, and this surprised me, there's really. Three. Oh, it's one of three. Oh, it's types three. that cover most of the ground. Now there's feet, some oh, three types in that. Yeah, right. Yeah. But the vast majority fall into three. Types I'd have imagined that it would be at least four. You know? Each of those three, and then that sort of one half, and then the other half. Look at the gun picture. I think we can shrink this dramatically. We can, those, we, those three types, yeah. in some cases, it's people who literally are so insane they do not know what they're doing, but that's a very tiny minority. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's unusual. That was true in some of the uh, major ones at Virginia Tech mm. and at, at Tucson. Um, no, it, it, it's a minority of the cases, though. It, it does happen, um, but that's that's one type. Another so type. When Virginia rare, Tech and Tucson were, were crazy people, and what was, was I guess with them? Eric Harris, the driving force behind Columbine. Also, killers who are often most serial killers fall into that type. Ted Bundy is a classic. Um, Ted Bundy. Who, they're not meant to. He didn't walk into a school and murder exactly fucking other people. people the way. He killed them one at a time. You fucking idiot. Reality. They just have no empathy for other people. They don't care. And with sadistic psychopaths, oh. they're people who actually enjoy inflicting pain of others. So they're doing it because they Does want this guy to know what the so fuck he's talking about? We've got those two. Believe it or not, the majority turn out to be suicidally, deeply depressed people. And they're, oh. they're very depressive. And we don't, we don't know what suicidally depressed people. We think of sadness and sort of a droopiness. We decide and, you know, to go and mother, you know. We think of it as an aggressive type thing. 20 like school kids rather than just hanging themselves, themselves I suppose, yeah. And so you're, you're beating up on yourself. And so you're, so you're depressed. Outwardly, you're this they can actually person get the energy to go and walk or drive somewhere and shit other people. cases, when you turn that outward, then... Um, then we have something like this. And, and, and most often when a, when a deeply depressed, angry person does that, he will normally inflict it either just on himself or commit suicide. The next wider thing is 
he will attack the person he but does it do that after buying a hamburger and a fucking work, you know, his, you know, milkshake boss, he'll shoot the boss or it'll be contained or does sort of he plan to do it and then get his burger and milkshake or, that's um, the whole thing then you it? go to a very small minority people then who will sort of lash out in that group and not kill just the boss but other people at work oh the lash out was what uh, and I don't then know a stick who just wants to sort of lash a pointed out stick wildly. Um, so three, lashing out wildly with a pointed stick hardly the same as shooting people with an automatic or semi-automatic sort of fucking gun matrix you know? at least of, of why why of course is part of oh. our, the major part of our response but based on what we have been through and based on what you learned Rachel about Columbine, why are you even fucking talking to this dick more healthy versus less healthier, more constructive versus less constructive response as a nation and as a community there to this tragedy. Is there anything sure. that we have in terms of lessons learned? Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest single thing is we need to address address adolescent depression much more. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there yeah, yeah. a really blue uh, color panel. Could that have stopped uh, this 30-year-old uh, 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 guy so walking into your school and shooting three kids, dealing with adolescent fucking anger? Depressed. Depressed. So it's not just sad. That's you know, in a deep state that need help of one type or another, whether it's you know, counseling or uh, drugs or whatever, uh, they need some help. Yeah. They're relatively easy to identify, and you can do it in a simple screening process. But stopping them from getting guns, no, let's not bother with that. Let's just talk to them. Let's talk them down out of their depression. Kids want to tell, they want help. And they will tell adults. Oh, I'm sure they won't help. Two adults they will not tell are their mom and their dad. And that's actually part of the screening. But they will tell the gun. Parents can't be in the room because they will usually tell a teacher or a counselor or a family doctor. <laughs> they, they will tell an adult, but they hide it from their parents because they're embarrassed, ashamed, all, all sorts of different reasons. So the parents are often blind to it because the child is sort of blocking their view. So parents have a difficulty, but, but yeah, we, we can yeah. do so much. Do any of these, these like people so know what the fuck they're talking about? Part of a pattern in our country and understanding oh, they're uh, just talking to be on TV and get paid. Life and our responsibilities. Dave Cullen, what are you getting paid? Uh, $1,400 for, for being on that show uh, and talking so shit? Nice thank you very much, Rachel. Sure, thanks. Yeah, thank I you, Rachel. I love that little fee you're giving me for turning up here and talking bullshit.